Okay, Volume 5, Bible Story, Volume 5, and we are at Part 4, Story 2, Youth with a Vision. <clears throat> okay. At the very time that all these terrible things were happening to Israel, God raised up one of the greatest prophets who ever lived to speak words of warning and comfort to his people. Excuse me. Just when Isaiah, yeah, Isaiah was born, we were not told, but it w must have been not very long after the death of uh, Elisha. At last, we know that he lived through the reigns of Uzziah, Dothan, Ahaza, and Hezekiah, Hezekiah, the king of Judah. This means that he also lived through the reigns of the last seven kings of Israel, from Jeroboam the second to Hosea. If you remember, this is okay. If we remember this, it this it will help. Well, some of this words wording. I mean, I'm reading it straight. It just doesn't seem right. If we remember this, it this it will help us to understand many things that Isaiah wrote. How fitting were his words concerning Israel. All sinful nation and people laden with in iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forgotten the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Some of this King James kind of throws me off. And 70 years ago, uh, the English is... Okay. Your country is des desolate. Your cities are burnt with... with fire. Your lands strained... Your land, strangers devour it in their presence, and it is desolate and as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion, which is Jerusalem, is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a large in a garden of cucumbers. That's what it says. As a besieged city. Isaiah called to work of a prophet came to the end of the reign of Uzziah. 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 Okay. U-Z-Z-I-A-H. Before the people of Samaria were carried into captivity by the uh, Assyrian. He tells us about it himself. In the year of, the, of that king, Yusira died. He said, I saw, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above the throne he saw Seraphim, which are six wings, that had six wings, two wings covering their face, two on their feet of each wonderful creature, and two that were used for flight. And one cried unto another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The earth is filled with his Full, is full of his glory. 
The doorpost trembled at the sound of the voice, and the building was filled with smoke. Woe is me, cried the young man, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in a midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Suddenly one of the seraphim picked up a live coal from the altar of incense and flew with it to Isaiah, lightly touching the young man's mouth with the burning ember, his mouth burning ember, he, he said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. And then it has a, a picture, a painting of of it right here and it's by Russell Harlan and there what it looks like of Isaiah getting the um, the coal on his mouth okay and it said surrounded by the glory of heaven while worshiping in the temple Isaiah cried I am a man of unclean lips, and an angel touches his lip with a glowing coal, glowing coal of off the altar. I actually made one like this, but I only did the angel, and um, I actually put it behind another painting drawing that I did, and someone got it. So they actually got two drawings, and I was big, it was 16 by 20, and he's actually got two, and one of them is the angel with the coal in his hand. Okay, let's, uh, sorry, I love talking about my art sometimes, and that's what it is. I didn't tell you the other picture, but, okay, let's get back to the story. Then through the smoke came another voice saying, whom shall I send, and who shall go for us? It was the, the voice of God. The Lord himself was calling him to service. Humbly, Isaiah answered, I, Here am I, send me. Go, said God, giving him the message he, had, he was to tell the people. And so it was that the prophet Isaiah began his life work his life's work. In the year of King Uzziah died, and when everybody in Israel, Jerusalem was fearful and worried about the future, he saw the King Eternal sitting on the throne of the universe, the one throne that will never pass away. In this vision, never he, this vision never left him. All throughout the reign of the wicked king Asa, Ahaz, A H A Z, all through the terrible invasions of Israel and Judah by the kings of Assyria, he remembered that he had seen and heard that wonderful night. Others might lose heart, but he, but he, not he. He knew for sure that God lives and reigns and must be victorious at last. In the dark and evil times in which we, he lived, he talked courage and hope. Someday God will raise of another deliverer. Someday it would be said, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, 
the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of this in increase, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with, with justice from henceforth and henceforth even forever. Now confronting this promise must have sounded in those days of war, invasion, suffering, and death. Least one should doubt whether it would ever come true. He added, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Again he said to the worried and sorrowing, sorrowing people, lift up your eyes to the heaven and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth will wax old like a garment, and they will dwell therein shall die like in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. To cheer up their hearts, still more, he said, for the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kingdom shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. He urged, let the wicked forsake. And then, of course, it has, whoa, interesting. Isaiah, has Isaiah down at the bottom and him pointing up. And then you have the birth of Jesus, his death, and his reign. And that's my, well, that is the interpretation of it. So it's a two-page. And it says, Ross Harlan is the is the artist and there it is have the Isaiah right here pointing up to the birth of Jesus his death and resurrection and to his reign eternally in heaven and you saw the little faint imprint and then it says let me get back to the story let the wicked forsake his ways and the and the righteous man his thought and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon okay okay at long last, he assured them, all evil will come to an end. Strengthen you, strengthen ye the, the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a full, fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with Repentant, re recompense. Uh, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame leap, lame man leap as a harp, and the tongue of the dumb sing, and a ran ransomed. Of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with song, songs and everlasting joy upon his head. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sightly shall flee away. 
in God's good time, there, there will be no more war, no more suffering, no more death. People with will build houses, plant gardens without fear of invaders, and long enjoy the work of their hands. Then there will be peace and friendship over all the world. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Such a beautiful message from Isaiah, the man who saw the Lord in his youth. And then it has a picture of basically heaven. And it's by Charles Zingaro. That's what his name is. Charles Zingaro. And this is what it looks like. The animals, the lion and the and the deer and the Jesus and the kids. And it says and the duck. Woo, duck. Isaiah described his vision of a beautiful new earth, free from all fear and unhappiness, where Jesus will dwell with those who have been faithful to him and obedient in his law. And of course, that is the end of part four, story two. Yeah, story two. And this is a long one. Okay, uh, so of course it's break time, so I'm going to break and then we'll get back to it in just a second.